What is a One Piece arc without a villain? Tis nothing but a grand, empty shell, is what I would say if I didn't believe One Piece could pull off a villainless arc. And honestly, I think they kind of already did that with Fisherman Island, considering everything surrounding that arc. But that's a discussion for another day, so I'll keep that in my back pocket. From the get-go, One Piece has had a colourful cast of antagonists, from catboy pirates to an Italian gang leader, to anime Eminem, to literally the entire world government. They've all been extravagant in their own right, a threat to be reckoned with, eventually crushed and pummeled under the might of Luffy's gummo gummo fist. Except for Kaido, of course, because as we all know, he was killed by Zoro. <laughs> Some have been more threatening than others, Crocodile's presence in the land of Alabaster still being one of the most daunting for me especially. I don't think I'll ever forget Luffy hanging from his hook like a dead fish. Overall, One Piece villains are pretty integral to the plot, and at this point we've been through plenty enough to understand the idea of them. So through all the big bads we've seen throughout the years, why is Doflamingo arguably one of the most interesting and one of the most terrifying antagonists One Piece has ever introduced? I want to make a clear statement that I am terribly attached to Doflamingo in a horrible, horrible way. I hate this ugly man. I hate his face. I hate his drip. I hate his entire existence. And I especially hate how fascinating he is to me. I hold a lot of bias for Doffy, mainly due to him being one of the most interesting villains I have ever encountered. And I'm not just talking about the grand scheme of One Piece, but in things I've watched and read overall. And it's not just me. To this day, Doflamingo is still insanely popular. People love this man, whether for better or worse. And while one of the reasons might might be for his goofy walk. There is a lot more to him than meets the eye. But I personally believe him to be one of, if not the most bone chilling antagonist in this series. There is an extreme madness to Doffy that is wildly unsettling, and the more we see of him, the more we discover just how disturbing this man truly is. It's why from the get go, his demeanor, his actions, they all leave a bad taste in your mouth. You want to grab this ugly creature by the head and yell, what is wrong with you? What's going on in there? However, I will throw him aside for now, because before I dive into to this huge pink coat of feathers, I'd like to dig into what makes a One Piece villain. I'd like to say more here, but it's honestly pretty simple. There are two main components of a One Piece antagonist. The first one is motivation, and the second one is power. Crocodile's motivation was to take over Alabaster, his power was Baroque works and his sand fruit. Enel's motivation was to destroy Skypiea, his power was his priests and his lightning fruit. Luchi's motivation was to capture Robin and take out the Straw Hats, his power was the world government and his leopard fruit, and so on and so forth. It's pretty cut and dry, and what elevates all these antagonists is Oda's insane character writing. There's one thing missing here some of you might have picked up on, and this is something that One Piece has incorporated in only pretty recently. There's a lack of explanation. A backstory. And El didn't really have one. Crocodile might have one, but we have yet to see it. And Lucci got a bit of a flashback, but it was less about his intentions and more about his constant cruel nature. Only pretty recently has the antagonist backstory been injected into One Piece, with Hody Jones, Big Mum, and Kaido. Judge didn't get one though, fuck that bitch. And while I believe Hody Jones's story was one of pretty exceptional conflict, Doflamingo's was something else entirely. For Doflamingo, we got to watch the conception of a monster. Not only that, the moral debate his life story brings up is one that's hard to find solid ground for. You talk to multiple people about Doflamingo and you'll find plenty of them with differing opinions. On whether they sympathise or not for this man and if the reveal of his backstory changed their view on him entirely. Doflamingo's story changed the game. He wasn't just the big bad anymore. He was a textbook full of moral questions and complicated emotions. I say all this but you probably shouldn't go around genociding kingdoms for your own personal gain. I'm pretty sure that's a big no. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is Doppy's backstory is one of the things that makes him so terrifying. His past has essentially created a villain that the audience can sympathize with. But why is that so bad? Is it wrong to sympathize with the antagonist of a series? Well, no, not at all. Except with this particular antagonist, with his particular methods, to sympathize with him is exactly what he wants. That sounds dramatic, I know, but hear me out. My question for you is, what is Doflamingo's prime method of choice in regards to tearing someone down? His devil fruit, most would say. It's a sensible answer and it is guaranteed to get the job done. But Doffy's real methods, his real power and his true expertise are his words. I don't know if you've noticed this about Doflamingo, but he talks. 
He talks and talks and talks and talks. Possibly one of the most loudmouth villains One Piece has. The thing about Doffy is he isn't monologuing, at least not all the time. Doflamingo talks because he's doing all he can to worm his way into your head. Doflamingo is, first and foremost, a supreme manipulator. There's great debate around Doflamingo and Law's fight. Discussions of why Law seemed as powerless as he was considering his fruit is deemed one of the most powerful fruits in the world. And by all means, Law could have done a lot more against Doffy, had countless options he either didn't consider or didn't execute. My answer to Law's sudden nerf state, and one of the main reasons Doflamingo scares me overall is, have you seen how Doflamingo talks to Law? Doffy is persistent in calling Law names. He calls him a brat, a kid and a squirt. He constantly talks down to him. He speaks to him as if Law was still 10 years old, the age he was on the day they met. And in doing so, drives right into a weak spot in Law's mental state. Doflamingo is pushing the idea that Law is powerless against him, that Law is still the same kid, his kid that he'd nurtured and trained. He talks to Law as if everything he's doing is some childish outburst, as if Law's an ungrateful brat and he's the good guy that's done everything for Law. And it fucking works. Law is clearly scared to his bones in front of Doflamingo. This man is not just an antagonist, but a previous mentor. Law fully admired Doffy, possibly even believed they loved each other as a family, when in reality, this was all Doflamingo grooming Law into being completely obedient to his will. And this isn't just me making this up. Doflamingo even outright said it to Corazon. And luckily for him, Law was right there to hear it alongside him. Had Law not heard those words, Doflamingo would have been successful in manipulating Law to become yet another person used only for his gain. This manipulation is something Doffy tries to hammer in during his fight with Law, constantly bringing up the past and even saying Law's will is not his own, claiming everything Law's doing is because of him. Through this fight, he's desperately trying to get Law to turn hoping for his mental state to break and give in to the Don Quixote family once more. Law wasn't losing to Doffy because he was nerfed, he was losing because my boy has honest to goodness performance anxiety in front of Doflamingo. If you pay more attention to the words than the actions, it is fucked up and I cannot blame Law for being scared shitless with this man. But it's not just Law. Doflamingo's entire crew presents the same situation. When it comes to the Don Quixote pirates, they're a truly interesting bunch. Doffy even feels like an actual good captain, possibly even a nice one. His crew's first introduction is him saving Baby Five from a potential fiancé. The explanation for killing said fiancé being, it's because he loves you like a sister. Baby Five then being told, you need to learn to say no to others' requests. Oh! How ironic. On the surface, this makes Doflamingo seem like he really does care about his crew, that he's capable of love and compassion the way a captain should be. But then you look at the entirety of his crew. You get their backstories, their personalities, their words of praise for Doflamingo, and you realize something horrifying. Every single member of the Don Quixote family is optimal for manipulating. From Baby Five's need to be wanted, to Diamante's easy to sway will. They are not a family, far from it even. Doflamingo's crew is a cult, and they all worship Doflamingo for, allegedly, what he's given them and all he's done for them. But in the grand scheme of things, they are tools to be used, and if they're not useful, they'll be thrown away to be replaced. We especially see the horrifying effects of Doflamingo's manipulation on Bellamy. Doflamingo made fun of Bellamy as a captain, had him fight and kill his own crew. Yet Bellamy wants nothing more than to be accepted by Doflamingo. I don't know about you, but the idea that someone as evil as Doffy can worm their way into my brain when I'm at my worst is terrifying. This is where the complications of his backstory come into play. Doflamingo by no means had a fantastic childhood, up until they left the Celestial Dragons, that is. As a child, he was hunted, strung up, burned, and shot at. Through all of this, should we feel pity for Doflamingo? Can we empathize with him? Many do. And in all fairness, no child should be chased down and beaten. But there's one factor that stopped me from empathizing with this man at all. An aspect of his life that completely throws everything into perspective. His blood brother, Corazon. 
Corazon went through the exact same harassment and abuse Doflamingo went through, yet we can see the clear difference in their empathy levels. An example of this with Corazon is when Law, as a child, was chased out by multiple doctors, yelling that he's no longer a person anymore. Corazon's heart immediately goes out to Law, and he calls him a poor boy who must be hurting. <laughs> An example of this with Doffy is when Lore explains that he's been through the fires of Flevance. But instead of showing any compassion, Doffy simply hasn't proved his worth to the Don Quixote family. And the best we get from Doflamingo is telling Lore he has the same hatred in his eyes. Essentially telling Lore, you're just like me for real. <laughs> He was in no way moved the same way Corazon was. He even liked that the traumatic events of Law's childhood had left him broken and bitter, because it left Law perfect for manipulation with this desperation to cause as much harm as possible to others. There is no empathy in this man. No compassion to be seen. During their fight, he tells Law he's seen hell on this earth. As if Law hasn't been through an actual hell of everyone he loved dying. While Doflamingo killed both his own father and brother. And Doflamingo knows that. We know Corazon and Doflamingo had the same traumatic childhood. And Law didn't even get so much as a sorry that happened from Doffy. While Corazon shed real tears of sorrow for Law. This can all tie into Doflamingo's very clear victim complex. Doflamingo is an incredibly, oh, woe is me, guy. I do believe what Doflamingo went through is awful, but he sure thinks that's a good enough reason to treat everyone else like dirt. Why should he feel sorry for others when he has obviously gone through the worst thing you could ever possibly go through? When it's not the worst thing one could possibly go through, is it? Especially not in the world of One Piece. Doflamingo believes he is a victim of his father, of his brother, of the common people, and of society as a whole. He thinks the world has done him wrong by taking away his status as a god, truly believing he is one. And oh, isn't it just so cruel that he was torn down from his position as a one percenter? How sad that he can no longer sit on a throne, own slaves, and be untouchable up in his own kingdom of heaven. Do you see what I mean? This is a doffy hate video, I'm going to cancel this bitch. His gaslighting methods are well polished, to the point even the audience can feel bad for him. But with what he's become, his past is just an excuse to be the monster he loves to be. To be the monster he always was, even as a child. You had this kid running around asking for slaves, asking for a gun to shoot people. It's not his fault those ideas were never programmed out of him, but he sure had a beating coming. Overall, as scary as Doflamingo is, he is awfully interesting. Here we have a horrible man who's sickening to his core, who has experimented on children, owned slaves, killed countless people with slow, torturous methods. And yet, I like him. He's fun, he's goofy, he's a little silly, and he's horrifying. But most of all, he's great to make fun of. And really, that's what matters the most. His ways of manipulation also coincide perfectly with his fruit, the literal puppeteer fruit. And everything ties into Doflamingo being nothing more than a master schemer. He set up a system around him of complete obedience, to the point he can lead anyone in or around the Don Quixote family by a hair. A villain who can take your free will from right under you, who can indoctrinate you into being nothing but a cog in the machine, and has the power to break you both in body and soul. Now that is a terrifying man. And thank you for watching. Doflamingo lives in my head rent free so I really wanted to make a video on him and if anyone has anything they'd like to hear me mansplain with a video essay, let me know. I'm also hoping to talk about Law and Corazon at some point since they're both such interesting characters so keep your eye out for that. I'll hopefully see you in whatever I make next. See ya!